Welcome to Gen Z Hoops. The Gen Z Basketball Coaching and Sports Business Show. On this podcast, you'll learn from professional players, coaches, and executives from all over the world and see the court in a brand new way. And now, joining you courtside, your Gen Z host, John Hartafillis. What's going on? What's up, man? Awesome. Finally getting to meet you in person at this camp. It's been a great last few days. Obviously, today's the last day. It's bittersweet, obviously, leaving just with all the fun yeah. we've had. So, I mean, what kind of went into putting this all together? It's been, it's been amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's been amazing if you're on the back end of it. I mean, well, I should say the front end of it, but on the back end, it's been very difficult. Been a lot of time put into it. A lot of people, you know, put a lot of uh, time and hard work into it, but it's made it special when it's all said and done. I think these kids had an enjoyable time. I think the staff had a great time. And, and the people that came in and spoke to the kids were very good and very informative. And I think these kids got a lot out of it. So you mentioned all the speakers that came to speak to the camp. And it was what I thought was really cool. And I've never seen any other camp was that you just, I mean, you had, of course, a bunch of coaches and players come. But you also had a bunch of people that had nothing to do with basketball come. And that was, I think, was most beneficial. So what, what, what kind of made you think of that? Like, that was a good way to get back to the community and how you see it unfold? Yeah, I've been blessed to be in the NBA, right? I've been blessed to play in the NBA. I've been blessed to, to coach in the NBA now. And I know how hard it is to get to the NBA. So, you know, most of these kids probably will not be in the NBA. Not probably. Most of these kids will not be in the NBA. But, you know, you get other people to come speak from other areas of life, other walks of life, uh, to point to the kids and let them know that there's other ways to be successful. So the ways to touch the next generation you don't have to be a basketball player, a football player, or a coach or somebody like that that can come back and throw camps. You can be a part of uh, the planning of a camp. You can be a part of helping the community do things the right way. But like you said, we had law enforcement, we had the mayor's office, and then we had people that had messed up uh, and then made a comeback. So there's different ways to be successful, and everybody's path is not the same. But a lot of our paths won't go through the NBA. Of course, and that's why it's so important, right, to make sure you're giving people right that backup plan or that, that idea of, okay, or maybe how you can use basketball in some other way. Because not everyone uses it to play, right, whether it's with the show or with something else. You can find other, other avenues to use the game and not let the game use you. Um, thinking about maybe the, the basketball side of things, I mean, what, what's it, what do you call like maybe doing that in that whole aspect of, of, the, of the breaking up things in the stations you know, and organizing everything that way? Yeah, I, I think – when you do basketball, you do a camp like this. Most of these kids, you know, a lot of, I should say, a lot of these kids are very athletic, right? But, you know, I always say this, and we say this in the NBA, there's not a lot of teachers out there. And, and that's what any given thing, I should rephrase that. There's not a lot of good teachers out there. So you have to break things down to the kids so they can learn. I mean, you got a big group out here, you got to break them down, put them in station, teach them the fundamentals of basketball. You know, they think because the NBA guys can run and jump over a car at any given time can shoot from half court, but they've done the fundamentals. They put in that work to become fundamentally sound, and they enhance uh, their they, – they start to build on top of their fundamentals by doing other things. That's shooting from half court at times, like a Dame Lillard or a Steph Curry. That's running off pin downs you now very quick to get your shot off. But, uh, but first, before they was able to do that, they had to get the fundamentals in. You better dribble with your right and left hand. Or shoot left hand layups. Play great defense. Communicate on, on both sides of the basketball. And those are what the stations are for, to teach you the fundamentals, teach you the understanding of the game, and to teach you the why of the game. It's incredible, right, you giving back to the community in the way that you have had. And I'm thinking to myself, right, I mean, this is the first time of the year that went so well. 170 campers, all these great things happening, all these amazing speakers. I mean, what is next year going to look like? <laughs> I hope it's bigger and better. I mean, obviously, you know, to do something like this, it takes time, it takes money, it takes effort, uh, it takes volunteer hours. Uh, you know, nobody on the staff got paid. Um, you know, none of the kids, I mean, the first 100 kids got to get there free, but we had to raise money. So the more money we can raise, uh, for, for beneficial, for to, for to benefit the kids, the better it gets. We got more than enough space here. Uh, I think we got more than enough manpower to help. Uh, we got more than enough speakers that's willing to come speak to these kids. It's all about funding. That's what anything. You just got to go out there and get the go getters, go find some money, and hope uh, the community will rally behind us to, to make sure this thing get, uh, grows and be successful year in and year out. 
after where this year's gone, I, 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 see, I have no doubt in my mind that's going to happen again. So, I think, mean, Coach, it's been awesome having you on for maybe a, a part two with the so here and talk about all the good things you do with this camp and can we come back next year? I uh, appreciate you, brother. Thanks for being awesome. here. Thanks, man. What's going on? What up? Good. Look at a, a fun week of hoops, right? It's been a lot of fun seeing some great basketball. I mean, what's your experience like at the camp so far? Oh, it's been fun. Uh, a lot of great, great players up here. Uh, the competition's been good, and everything's just been fun all around. No, of course. And then, I mean, what, what else have you kind of been taking from, like, all the stations, right, the drills? What's, what's been your biggest takeaway? Oh, the footwork and strength, really, I feel like it's helped a lot of us out because you need that. It's not just the basketball skills. You have to be physically good. So. No, I mean, of course. And then, I mean, maybe with the, with the guest speaker themselves, like some of the NBA coaches, like guys that played in the league for, ten, for five, ten years, and it's taken so much. I mean, what was maybe your biggest takeaway from those guys? Just – you have to listen and, you know, just they're telling you everything they know and they obviously know uh, how to get where you want to get. So just got to listen to them. I mean, I mean, coming with your whole team, I mean, that must have been fun, right? You guys yeah. played in a tournament, right? You guys have kind of been your brothers for the last few years. This might be the last time, right? You might see some of them, right? You're graduating, going off to school. Um, I mean, what's it kind of been like maybe having that kind of camaraderie with a team and doing all this, all these camps together? Oh, it's been great. Uh, you know, haven't seen them, some of them in a while. And just catching up, uh, being around them all the time, it's, it's been great. Fantastic. And then maybe working out, right, at, at UHA and like, getting workouts in there, right? It's, it's kind of just with the, the, the history that that gym has and getting the, all, your, all your teammates, working on some pro moves with some really good coaches and obviously with, with other teammates. And what's that kind of been like? Uh, like I've said, it's been great. It's like the coaches, my, my father, it's just the workouts have been good, just getting better every day. Perfect. Awesome, awesome meeting you. Let's get a good, uh, good last day at camp. Appreciate it. Chris, what's going on, man? How you doing? It's good. Great week at camp. The first inaugural uh, Greg Buckner camp down here in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. I mean, just how, how did you kind of meet Buck and tell us a little about yourself? Uh, well, like Greg, I'm from Hopkinsville, and uh, we actually grew up across the street from each other. We directly yeah. across the street from each other. And we, I, I met him, I think he was maybe 13 years old, and we played on the same little – this round ball tournament team in the summer. And we've been friends since then. And I'm a mentor. You know, he's done a great job, especially bringing something like this back home. No, that's incredible. That's got to be, uh, that clock's got to be renamed like NBA Way or something. I don't think there's any blocks other than brothers where you got two NBA players growing up across the street. That's pretty funny. But I mean, tell I me, mean, what, what did you kind of I mean when, when, he, when, he, when this camp was coming here at Hopkins? I mean, what, what were your first thoughts? And I mean, how, how did you kind of see the week play out? Uh, well, when Greg called me and I, he said, I, he didn't ask me, he told me, <laughs> I need you here. I said, of course, so brother, I got you. And uh, but anything he does, I uh, know it's going to be a great situation for everyone. He's always willing to give back. Uh, I think he's seen me do it. When I first came into the league, I've always had camps and did things for the community. So he's taking that mantle and run with it. Awesome. So, like, well, I mean, what we've kind of been doing day in and day out of camp. Today's the last day. We've seen a lot of guys get better. Just obviously a lot of great basketball. I mean, what what, what would you kind of take away from it the most? Oh, well, they. I think they they've learned some discipline. Uh, first and foremost, which is needed in everyday walks of life, uh, the guys have gotten a lot better. The young ladies as well. They have learned a lot from all the various speakers that's come in and spoken to them. So, I've seen some growth in them as basketball players. It's incredible. So, Chris, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure meeting you. There is, man. What's going on? Good. How about you? It was awesome getting to meet you and stuff. I, I, I wrapped up a great week at camp, and obviously just watching you write speak to the kids, the way they accepted your message, it was really, really cool. And I'm curious, I mean, when you first looked in, what was your first impression of the camp? Oh, uh, I mean, I just saw the environment. Uh, all the kids were sitting there. It was geeked up, kind of happy. So it was cool to see them with a smile on their face. It's incredible, right? And I, I mean, I'm trying to think, like, maybe when you when you were kind of going to camp, maybe kind of kind of remembering that. I mean, being seven, eight, nine years old, and, and kind of getting super excited about camp. Or, oh, this guy's you know coming to speak to us at camp. I mean, that's got to be awesome. Yeah, it's super cool just having the guest speakers come in. Uh, you never know who comes who is coming in. So uh, we was always on our toes, just waiting for the next person to come in and talk. 100 percent. I mean, and you're, the message you gave them, I, I thought was really impactful. And you started off kind of focusing on hard work and stuff, right? And that's obviously been a huge thing for you in getting to where you are. I mean, what, what was kind of your message to the kids and getting them to kind of maybe try to follow, follow that path that you you've laid out for yourself? Um, yeah, like you said, I was just talking about like the hard work, how to get there. Um, I mean, just staying focused, really, just putting the time in, just putting the work in, just trying to get to the next level. 
of course, and then like uh, at the end, right, you guys answered some uh, Q and A questions. I mean, what were some of the best responses you got? I mean, some of them might have been a little crazy talking <laughs> about your PJ and stuff, and oh, what's they doing after this? But I mean, what, what was what, what was the, what were they asking you um, afterwards? Um, they were just talking about the road that I had. Uh, one guy actually asked about the, the meniscus tear, so that actually kind of shocked me. Um, and they just talked about like who was my favorite teammates. Um, one good question was who did I learn the most from. In my first two years, so that was a really good question as well. Was your answer Coach Buck? What, what, what happened? Yeah, you know, Coach Buck, uh, JJ, uh, man, some of the vets, of course. No, it's incredible, right? It's, it's, and it's funny, uh, like bringing up how these kids actually do their homework on you. They didn't just say, right. okay, there's Strong's coming to camp, but just he's them, like they, they said, okay, what, what did you do in college? Right? Like, well, how, how did you get to where he is? And I mean, I, I'm curious, kind of curious too. I mean, what, I mean, that, that's a huge problem of diversity, like tearing him in this your freshman year. Right, still working super, super hard to know that when you get that opportunity to get to the NBA draft and, and to get picked really high, right, you're going to take advantage of that. I mean, what, what was that all like? Yeah, man, uh, that minutes to say it was really tough. Uh, that, that year was kind of rough for me. Uh, but like you said, just having that determination, that hard work for me. Uh, my family was always in my ear telling me that I was going to be okay. So just having them in my circle, uh, man, just keeping God first, I mean, that was another big thing in my recovery. So. It's, it's so important, right? And kind of that, that concept of uh, always giving, letting that positive energy come out. I mean, that's kind of you know, is always giving back to the community, right? Maybe not being from Hopkinsville specifically, but still like coming back and giving back to another community, helping out another coach. Like that's that's all kind of that positivity that, right? But no matter what's going on on the outside of the adversity you're going through, it helps everybody out, which is which is awesome. So it's it's a really incredible thing about all that. I mean, I, I one thing I mean, this uh, kind of thinking about. I mean, I'm all about Gen Z hoops and stuff, right? And you, you being a super young player in the league, I mean, what's that kind of been like for you in adjusting to, to that NBA climate? Yeah, uh, it was pretty tough for me. Uh, my rookie year was kind of tough, but just coming into myself this year, um, having confidence and the team and coaches having the confidence in me, um, I mean, it meant a lot. So, I mean, I give all my faith to my praise to them. Like Coach Buck, JJ, uh, Coach Baker Staff, they – they really have a lot of trust and confidence in me, so I like that a lot. Oh, it's a, it's huge and important. I mean, you're you're also the first player um, ever to be born in the 2000s to play in the NBA. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> I mean, it's just obviously like thinking about that. Uh, I, I'm born in uh, my, my birthday's coming up in a few days, June 21st, 2000, but you're in January, so yeah. it's just cool, right? Thinking about like just all young people just doing stuff, and obviously, like you being like that's just a cool thing. Being the first player to ever do that, yeah, for uh, sure. in the 2000s, for sure. it's really cool. I mean, and but it's not just you, right? Your whole team's super young, and you guys are coming back, right? Every, everyone's getting better and better every year, whether it's you or your teammates, whoever it might be, everyone's just getting better. Um, and that's obviously super exciting for fans in Cleveland, for like people watching. Um, the coaches right are obviously super excited because yeah. okay, what's happen next year? Let's get better and better and better. I mean, what are you most excited for? Um, totally make this playoff push. Um, I mean, just watching the playoffs now, just having the team, was well, just watching the teams that we played and most of the time beating the playoffs, um, to still playing. So just making a playoff run. And then, like you said, just coming back and seeing all the improvement that other guys made over the summer. I mean, that's pretty exciting for me as a point guard. Yeah, you definitely addition that, but get, get a little bit more assists next year, whatever it might be, right? The ball's going to be moving. I'm excited to see that playoff push, too, okay? It's going to be a lot of fun. And pleasure meeting you, man. It's been great. Thanks for coming through. For sure. Well, JJ, man, what's going on? How are you, man? Awesome. Awesome meeting you, right? Awesome, right? Great week of basketball. It's awesome having you for, for the last day. And obviously, you've got to drop some knowledge on our campus. I can't wait for that to that happen. Tell us a little bit how you met Coach Buckner and maybe what kind of got you here. Um, yeah, I, I've known Coach Buckner for uh, almost uh, 10 years now. Um, we have uh, some very, very close mutual friends. And, uh, you know, I've learned so much from him uh, in this time. Uh, I've, I've worked with him now with two organizations, both the Memphis Grizzlies uh, and now the Cleveland Cavaliers. And uh, I love being a part of what he has going on here in his hometown. And, uh, you know, I'm just honored to be able to be here today speaking with you and, and speaking to the campus. It's incredible. I mean, maybe give us, I mean, I know you're going to give it now, but what's the, give us a little sneak peek on what you're going to tell the campus. Uh, well, you know, I, I was, was going to allow them to uh, ask me some questions and allow them to kind of pick my brain, um, as, as I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, there's, there's always a lot of NBA personnel coming through to uh, the camps. And so uh, I want the kids to be able to ask their questions and, uh, and hopefully I'll be able to answer some of, some of, the, some of the questions. 
Of course, they won't cover all the maybe off the court stuff, and I'm sure they're going to ask you some, hopefully, some pretty thought provoking questions. Mm -hmm. But maybe what's some of the the offensive things that maybe you have to to share with them? Well, watching them play this morning, um, and, and one of the things that we like to uh, get across to our guys in the NBA is uh, the importance of spacing, allowing for space, allowing for the ball to breathe, allowing for the ball to grow. And so, uh, watching them play this morning, I, I think that's something that uh, they could use uh, certainly as, as, as our guys do at, at the professional level. Definitely, I mean, and just thinking about maybe from the point you, when you got into the NBA, I mean, the game's changed so much in the last two, three years, let alone, I mean, in the last few years before that. I mean, it's, it's, it's only going to keep on changing. How important is it for the youth today to maybe pick up these concepts so they don't fall behind and they can stay current? It's extremely important, uh, especially with the emergence uh, of analytics and the three-point shot. Spacing becomes a very, very important aspect of the game. Uh, if you want to be able to get your shot off, you need the space to do so. If you want to be able to drive, penetrate, um, crack the shell, if you will, of the three-point line in the paint. You need spacing in order to do that. Uh, it also gives you an opportunity to get your feet right, get yourself set to, to shoot the shot uh, when you're open as opposed to passing up on that, that wide-open shot. And Jay, thank you so much for coming in today. It was a pleasure meeting you. Absolutely. And have a great last day at camp. Thank you, John. I appreciate it, man. Well, Tony, man, what's going on? How you doing, John? Doing good? Great. Yeah, it's great man. to finally meet you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've been roommates this whole time, right? But obviously, a great last few days of basketball, yep. getting to meet everybody, getting to get on the court, right? Putting a lot of work in. Yes, sir. I mean, tell us a little bit. I mean, how did you even get here? How did you meet Coach Buck? Oh, kind of man. Not much. Buck, I was in freshman year. Freshman year. I, uh, I had Clemson. I was a freshman. Buck was a sophomore. Um, got recruited by Rick Barnes, who was our coach for uh, three years. He was Bucks coach the whole time. He recruited me, came in, and uh, met him on a visit because I was actually committed to Duke. I don't okay. know if I even told you that part. I was committed to Duke, and then I came on a visit with one of my teammates that was going to Clemson, and um, we ended up, you know, I met Buck. And I met the boys. I was like, man, I, I like these guys. I, so I decided I changed my commitment and it came to uh, end up going to Clemson. That's incredible, right? How the friendships kind of lasted so yes, long. And right yes. now, now you're here in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. For yeah, in Hoptown, Kentucky. It's funny because he's always talk about it. And our coaches used to always talk about, Buck, you don't want to go back to Hoptown and then play. And he's like, yeah, I'm trying to, you know, trying to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and bring something back to it. And that's what he's done with this camp. He's brought, you know, brought bringing something back, giving back. No. Oh, 100%. So, I mean, I mean, right now, I mean, right now, I mean, he's giving something back. All the coaches are here giving stuff back, right? yep. whether it's knowledge of the game or even knowledge about things outside of the game, which has been incredible. Yeah. What's your bit? What's your kind of role been in maybe in these stations or in the um, Shoot. Hey, you know what? I, I, it was a shooting station. I, I had the best assistant in the business doing this with me. And that's one of the things that I did at Clemson. I, um, while I was at Clemson, my junior year, Bucks senior year, I led the nation in three point percentage. I led the ACC for a little while until the last game. We lost by Duke. We lost to Duke, and then someone on Duke ended up passing me for the, you know, so I came in second that year. But I'm, I, I used to be a shooter, and that's one of the things I can, I can teach the game. I, that's uh, bring to the table. That's what I bring to the table. Of course, man. Right? Obviously, <laughs> it's been, a, it's been fun, right, doing that, and the kids are right, just getting better and better every single day. Right. I mean, which kind of been your biggest thing that you've seen maybe from this camp maybe outside the game? Like some of the guest speakers have come that maybe weren't, like, there's been NBA coaches, but there's been sheriffs. There's been people from outside yeah. of the sports world. It, it, it's um, when you're giving back, that's one of the things you, you want to leave. You want to take what you've had, what you have and make it better. And that's what that's what Buck is trying to do with this camp. You know, you have by having a share, by having someone, you know, telling their story of how they, you know, did some did you know, went through their life, their, their, their journey. And um, it, it, if you reach one kid in a camp like this, um, when you do that, it's a, it's a good thing. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to bring, you know, a different variety of, of speakers, of people that have different paths to their greatness and, and give it so this a, a, a fraction can hit somebody in the camp and then they might turn around and next thing you know, they're going to be better off. Tommy, incredible stuff, right? Let's we'll have a great last day. It's been awesome meeting you. Oh, man. New York.
Hey, Ray, what's going on? Nothing much. Awesome, guys. It's so good to talk to you on this last day of camp. It's been a great week. Um, obviously, but everyone's running around, going crazy. You're, you're all over the place, right? I've seen you everywhere. I mean, talk to us. I mean, what, what, what kind of brought you here to this camp, and what have you been up to? Um, I'm a native of Hopkinsville. I have a background in recreation and sport. Uh, my master's in facility and event management. Um, I played three sports, which also included basketball. Um, I remember playing in G Buck League. 2005, 2006. Yeah. Um, it was in my backyard, my community. I, mem I remember the memories that it brought, you know, the experience, the feelings that it brought. And I felt that it was important to help give that back to my community. Um, I'm currently in Nashville, so, you know, I figured this was a better opportunity to give back. You know, I've always wanted to be a part of the NBA, NFL, some sort of way, and it's, it doesn't, you can't beat this. when You don't have to be hired by the NBA to be within the NBA. 100%. And that's incredible, right? The fact that you're there from the beginning. I, I, I love that because this is the, of course, the inaugural camp here in Hopkinsville, but there have been things in the past. I mean, what, were, what were those original ones like? It was fun. So he also had an educational component to it. So in order to participate in the league, you had to do classes as well. So, you know, I thought that was pretty important to, you know, move forward in life, having an education, being prepared for college. Um, outside of that part was the fun part, basketball. It was outdoors. You know, people came from all over. People are home for the summer that live in Florida, live in different places, and everybody gathered at this spot. And then, of course, there was a party afterwards for the teenagers. So this was something we looked forward to every summer, you know, so I'm just glad that he's back and giving these kids another shot and having fun in the summer. Definitely, no, I mean, that's, that's all so cool and thinking about just how, how, how long this has been going on. And the biggest thing from that that I took from it was just so cool. It's the fact that there were educational, there's an educational component to it, which is mm -hmm. awesome because no camps have that. I, right. I've never been to one that has that. Right. I mean, with this camp, what I, what I was blown away by um, was that, of course, we had our NBA players come in, our NBA coaches come in and talk right. to the kids. We also had law enforcement. We had city, that, that stuff doesn't happen in the world. Right. So, I mean, obviously, you've seen it happen for years now with Coach Buckner. But what was it like kind of seeing it happen again? And you know, with, and, and with the, what these kids might have taken from it? I can't even put into words like how proud I am of the people that pulled through and came to support because those very people that came to speak and support were the same people that were mental, mentoring me dropping gems and leading me and being leaders in my life. So it's dope to see them still here and able to do it again. So from this perspective, I'm just glad to be a part of it this time and be one of those things for those kids. And maybe they'll remember me later on down the road. And hopefully I've inspired them some kind of way. It's incredible. And you're definitely doing that. And you're doing it masterfully. I mean, I, I really haven't seen much of you because you're always running around. I kind of see you run through, run back. What have you been up to during this camp? Um, so pretty much doing event management. That is my background of um, event management. So I'm I'm putting out fires. I'm going to get waters. I'm going to make sure the meals and the lunches are prepared. So I'm kind of behind the scenes. I like that. I don't have to have, you know, the camera on me 24-7 for the shine. I like making the magic happen, which is usually being behind the scenes. Well, the camera's on you right now, and this is awesome, right? So, uh, awesome meeting you. Awesome to have this, right, this last day of camp winding down now. Um, and it's incredible. Hopefully, I, I can't wait to come again next year. Yes, thank you for coming. Always. Mr. Brooks, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Pleasure to meet you. Awesome to have you come and speak to the camp tonight on our last day and really got, get, we're teaching the campers a, a lot of, of really valuable lessons. I mean, how did you kind of meet Coach Buck and end up here? Um, basically, I've known him since he was young. <laughs> I'm much older than he is. Uh, just a little history, like his mom and my brother were actually in school together. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so it's, you know, of course, you get as he gets pop more popular, the more you realize, oh, I know who that is. Yeah. So, but, um, but actually, uh, I've known him since he was younger, more so probably in high school years and things like this, as he was going into high school. And then, of course, uh, as his high school career started to take off and going to college and uh, follow along from that aspect. So before we get into maybe the, what, what you spoke about with our campers today, mm -hmm. I mean, what, what's it kind of been like for you to see such, such, a, such an amazing experience maybe brought back to Hopkinsville okay. um, and, share, and share with the community? Uh, as a former athlete, as uh, involved in community service, uh, elected official, anytime you can get young people involved um, and you can bring in what I call high caliber name people that they can relate to 
and uh, happy to be around and things of this nature, they're always going to sit and be a little more tentative than say just Joe Blow. So it, it, it definitely has an impact, but not only just for the kids, but it has impact in our community uh, because we want more people. That's something we've always talked about is uh, having our young people come back home and whether they, whether it's a job or a career or something to that effect, or even just simply giving back. And he's definitely been giving back him and Chris Whitney. And that's kind of been the biggest thing that I've appreciated from this campus. I mean, obviously coming, coming here for the basketball and that, mm -hmm. that's kind of maybe the main thing, but to learning so much about things off the court, right? And okay. that's what some speakers like yourself have come in and giving us so many lessons that don't have to do with the X's and O's, right. but they have to do with real life. Right. Um, so what were some of the things that you spoke to the campers about to, to really get them ready for that? Uh, one of the big things was education. Yep. Uh, uh, that's, I'm an educator myself. Uh, former football coach and in and, and doing those things. The sports is just something that opens doors in one aspect and it takes kids off the street, but yet at the same time, it exposes them to discipline. Mm -hmm. It exposes them to uh, ups and downs, failures, successes, uh, same thing that they're gonna experience in, in real life. So when you can take those things and then you implement the fact of how important education is. As I spoke to the um, young people about your student athlete, student first, athlete second. Yep. Without the student part, the chance of you playing college ball, wherever it is, or any type of college sports is not likely. But thank you so much for sharing this lesson with our campers and can't wait to wrap up another amazing day and, and hope we can, right, can come back next year and continue to get back to the community. And we'd be more than happy to have you. Um, that's one reason why we built this facility. We built this facility for things just like this. So I'm, I'm happy to see it being used and, and I guess you say, bringing people not only within the community together, but bringing people on the outside from other places and other cities here to Hopkinsville. 100%, thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey man, what's going on, dude? Hey, what's up, baby, what's up? It's a good time. The first interview we're doing here at the Greg Buckner Elite Camp, really great weekend. We're closing up the last day, and honestly, just I've learned so much. I mean, it's just an incredible experience for all the kids. It's really been a lot of fun. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Dez Wilford, professional sports performance coach. I'm from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, currently living in Denver, Colorado. I've been in this sports performance fitness realm for roughly 15 years, and I had some great experiences working from with novice all the way up to Hall of Fame athletes, general population clients, running fitness classes, had great opportunities traveling all over the United States, out of the country several times, delivering the gift, working on my craft, gathering knowledge, putting tools in my toolbox. So, man, it's just, it's been a, a roller coaster for the last 15 years. And it's just amazing how not only sports, has been a tool and helped develop me as a person and helped develop character and uh, just being able to meet, you know, some would consider who's who. And uh, those things are just, just great. And being able to come back home to the first annual G Buck camp and touch these young people in my hometown and being able to see Buck, it's been a long time and it, it, it's, it's just great. And I'm loving the energy, loving the opportunity and the platform. Love it, love it. You're always bringing the energy. I mean, what's what have you been doing in the last few days of camp? I mean, leading the war, war warm ups. I mean, we're doing so much and making sure these kids have a memorable experience. So yeah, uh, I, that, that's my thing. I really feel like my my gift is my energy. If I don't take care of that, getting good rest, putting good food in my body, taking care of my mind, continue continue to work and research things so that I can touch these young people. You know, like I said, I'm all about building a foundation. You know, it, it, start, it starts with a base. If we're not able to give these young people a base and build them up, they can't get to the point to where I am, where you at, possibly get to where Coach Buck, G Buck's at. And I think that's what it's all about. 100%. And I mean, your, your nickname, right, The Body. Tell us a little bit about that. Where, where did that come from? Man, that's crazy, man. So in high school, playing uh, high school football, one of my coaches, man, we come out of the weight room and uh, I think I bench pressed 300 pounds that day. Fish rest 300 pounds. And he said, uh, well, I think we, we found a new linebacker and we're going to nickname him The Body. I was like, The Body? He said, look at you. We're going to call you Dez The Body Wilfred. And it kind of stuck, man. And I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I get tired of people calling me The Body because I said, well, what if I get fat? They said, well, you'll just be Dez The Belly Wilfred. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I got that years ago, man. I was a junior in high school. 
and I embrace it. And I ain't gonna lie, it kind of keeps me going in what I do. It's because I know it's not just about the physical, but your presentation is everything. And I try to keep that thing going, man. That's where I'm at with it. Oh, I love it. And then obviously with this week coming to a close, I mean, a great past couple of days, we're gonna finish off strong today. What's been your favorite part of camp? Man, I'm gonna be honest, just, just being a, coming into an environment, you know, feeling the energy and, uh, you know, feel, feeling like you, you, you're celebrated, you know, not tolerated. You know, being around G Buck, it's been a long time. You know, we grew up indirectly in the same place, but not directly hands on, you know, knowing one another and uh, to be embraced by other professionals and see these kids come around because, you know, you know, we don't get guys like this to come in to Hopkinsville, Kentucky, you know, on a, on a regular basis. And I, I just think it's important, man, creating that environment, that energy, letting these young people know, hey, that's, that's a big old world out here. There's opportunities. And, and being able to, for G Buck to come in and create that energy, that, that's what I love, man. I love it. Love it, man. Awesome getting to meet you guys. Absolutely. I appreciate you so much. All right. It's Corey Cookie man. What's going on? Hey, how's it going, coach? It's been great. I mean, obviously, a great week of hoops. Like, we're getting to know everyone here for the last uh, three, now four days. We're out there at camp uh, today. It's just been a lot of fun. I mean, I'm curious uh, with you. I mean, how did you kind of meet Coach Buck and, 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 and come, still coming to this camp? Well, Coach Buck, I've uh, known for a couple of years now. My mom is from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, so we grew up in the same neighborhood. Um, he's been a great friend, a great family member, um, mentor on a lot, you know, good thing to bounce basketball off and also life, man. Great no, guy. Of course, and that's kind of been the biggest thing in this camp, right? It's been so it, Obviously, we've done so much on the court. But we've had so many speakers come in and talk about lessons from off the court. I mean, what have you kind of taken from some of those, right? Oh, definitely. Uh, me being, um, I was I was in the military for 24 years. So listening to some of these stories on how uh, people have not, uh, they've used basketball as a, a tool to do other things in life. You know what I'm saying? The hard work, the uh, dedication, the preparation, things of that nature. And, and you see, although... We're not basketball NBA stars or anything like that, but basketball still brings us back together, even though that's not our profession. Beautiful, right? That's what it's all about. It's yes. like using the game, not letting the game use you in a sense, exactly. right? So, I mean, what have you kind of been doing day in and day out of this camp? I mean, with the stations and all that. I mean, there's been so much maybe, maybe hands-on stuff. We've been on our feet all day. What, what have you been up to? Oh, uh, for me, I've been handling the ball, handling with the kids, uh, getting them to understand, you know, you got to be able to use both hands, right hand, left hand, and having them use their imagination and, and Sky's the limit. Of them to do whatever they want to do. So, coach, it's been great. Pretty head has been great. I appreciate so it. Have a great last day at camp. All right, you too. Thank you. Chris Moses making it look easy, man. What's going on? What's going on with you? You're making this interview look easy, honestly. Hey, the work on would just make it look easy. <laughs> Love it. I mean, tell us, how did you kind of end up in here in Hopkinsville? How did you meet Coach Buck? Like, what was kind of how did this week kind of end up happening for you? Uh, so, I'm originally from Clarksville, Tennessee, and uh, well, uh, I, be, I grew up here playing and stuff like that, obviously competing through high school. And uh, I've, I've been in the community here for the last three years, training a lot of the kids. And Coach Buckner reached out to me and just asked me if I would, would like to be involved. And I'm always for the community, helping change the culture one dribble at a time. So this was an easy uh, call. I, I had no choice but to come to this. It sounds like a lot of things like that are easy. I mean, tell us a little about Make It Look Easy and what you're doing there. Uh, so Make It Look Easy is my training company. Me, myself, and my other co-founder, Pedro Bradshaw, who just recently graduated from Bellamy. Uh, that's currently an NBA draft. Uh, it's a training company that we use. And like I said, we use it as a platform for these kids, not only to train, obviously, but just to help them uh, use our, our platform to springboard them, to help them with just networking to get to college or, you know, just mentorship and just everything, man. we got people that don't play sports. You're making it look easy. Uh, just finding a way to just make an impact in this world and uh, make it a positive impact. So anybody who's doing something positive for the community, for the kids, is making it look easy. I love that, right? It doesn't even have to always be about sports. Like you said, I mean, Coach Buck, is what I think has been great is obviously all this X's and O stuff in basketball, stuff right. on the court, but he's one of so many speakers that have nothing to do with basketball, right. but they have so much to do with life. Right. I mean, what have you kind of taken away from that and seeing that kind of being given back to the community? Well, uh, I think it's amazing, uh, one, for him to use his resources to uh, come in here and, and inform these kids of the different avenues you can take to success. A lot of these kids a lot of times think that sports, especially in low-income uh, communities like uh, Hopkinsville or just other places in the world. Uh, they think that sports is the, or sports or music is the only avenue. 
Uh, but as you grow older, you realize that there's a lot of different ways to get to where you want to go. So um, you can be successful. He's had police officers. He's had uh, obviously had coaches and stuff like that. But there's people uh, like business people to come and just give them different platforms to know that, hey, you can make it uh, in different routes. So. It's so important. I mean, and, and thinking about maybe doing that's the off the court stuff, I mean, basketball wise, what have you been kind of doing uh, day in and day out at this camp and, and getting these guys better? So we've been, obviously we've had, uh, Coach Buck has got an amazing staff, uh, a lot of people, a lot of coaches or former NBA players. So we've been working on different things, each station, ball handling, uh, our station uh, to be exact, uh, myself and uh, one of the other staff members, we're working on playing without the ball, getting some actions, you know, down screens or just up screens or cutting, ball screens, just making sure they understand playing in space and being a good teammate. Huge stuff, and can we continue this last day at camp and keep making it look easy? Man, it's been amazing. Thank you for the opportunity. Look forward to going with you guys. Stacey, man, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, man? Great awesome. to meet you. It's been awesome getting to know you and getting to meet you this over this past week. Obviously, an incredible week of basketball. Yes. I mean, what, what kind of got you here and, and, and kind of just knowing uh, meeting Greg and getting to end up here in Hopkinsville, Kentucky? Well, I'm originally from Hopkinsville, and so, you know, being from Hopkinsville, I left at an early age, was gone, joined the military. Uh, when I came back, I heard about UHA had this guy playing ball, Greg Buckner. Um, and so I wanted to go check him out. Also, he hung around my brother. So my brother introduced me. And uh, so then we just all became good friends, uh, being from Hopkinsville. So then when he played at Clemson, uh, I'm on the East Coast up in Alexandria, Virginia. So I used to go down and check him out. They played Maryland and ACC. So I used to go check the yep. games out. And, he said he wanted to do something for the community. So um, basketball camps, I coach high school football. So I like working with the kids. And so it was a great idea like, for me. Also being from Hopkinsville, give me a chance to come back home, see my family, but also give back to the community. It's incredible right, being able to do that. And I'm, I'm, cu I'm curious, like, what has really been your, your role in, in this camp so far? And I mean, with all the stations, there's, there's really so much going on. We're, we're on our feet as coaches, like maybe all day long, but what, what have you kind of been focusing on in helping these kids get better at the game? Uh, more so, you know, the, the life skills, the discipline, understanding, you know, paying attention. Uh, I feel that's very important, you know, as a high school coach. Uh, my philosophy is if I don't have your attention, I can't teach you. Uh, one thing I like about Greg is he teaches, he don't just coach. And there's a big difference between teaching and coaching. Uh, and also that's where the discipline comes in. And so I think it's great, you know, we have what, 170 kids out here. And uh, that's great for Hopkinsville. Also, it's exciting to see kids from outside of Hopkinsville. 100%, right? I mean, coming from New York, right? Coming, coming here in Hopkinsville and getting to meet everybody, it's, it's incredible. Yes. And you touched on a really important point, right? I mean, basketball, obviously, is maybe what brought us here, but it's the life skills that are making it so memorable for everybody. Yes. I mean, what's been maybe your, your biggest takeaway? I mean, we've had so many speakers come in that aren't basketball coaches, and they're coming in and, and giving this life advice to these kids that, 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 that'll really help them uh, down the road. Well, I, I appreciate that because of diversity. Um, you know, they got a chance to get a various of uh, uh, professionals from the community. And it also gives those kids, if, if they don't make it in sports, they could be in law enforcement or they could be a uh, city councilman or they could be a coach, uh, you know, and seeing that someone that's working in Cleveland coaching, you know, it gives them another out, another avenue, another goal to strive for. And um, that's one thing that uh, when Greg and I was speaking, I've also been on conference calls with him, kept putting it together and trying to get their itinerary. And I wanted to make it as diverse as possible because the more we give them, it, it's more they can have the process and think about it. And you guys have done a great job of that. So I, it's been a privilege right being here this past week and hopefully we'll another, another great day today. Thank you. Yeah, man, what's going on? Nothing much. How's, how's camp been? Talk to me. It's been great. Um, I got to uh, meet a lot of new people from different places. Got better. Jump shot is good. That's what it's all about. So, I mean, what was your favorite part of camp? Speakers, I mean, drills, a lot, a lot of things happen. I mean, it's a tough question, but if you had to pick one, what did you take out of this the most? Uh, the shooting drill over. Um, you said that's my station. Yeah. But okay, what about out of all the speakers and who? I mean, a lot of them. What some of them were basketball coaches, some of them were former players, some of them weren't even involved in basketball, but they came and gave you a lot of life lessons. So I mean, what did you take the most? I would say my favorite was Kerry Sharver because he spoke to us about his life and how not and how to choose the right path for yourself. So I'll say it was his. Well, was there anything in particular that he said that really stuck out to you? Yeah, yeah. It was one thing he was talking about um, how he had got caught up in the street life, how not to follow your friends. Like, make your own path. Don't do what everybody else does. That really, like, hit me in my heart. 
some good advice and obviously a great week of basketball, great week of learning, make, make some new friends, really good stuff. Awesome meeting you. Thanks. Hey, my man, what's going on? Pleasure getting to speak to you. Obviously, great last day of camp. Like, we're on a lot of the last three days. Today being day four, it's awesome seeing everything wrap up. I mean, what's been your camp experience? Uh, it's been good, like, to come to Kentucky because I'm from Alabama. Like, Interesting. Day four. Yeah. So, like, what, 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 what brought you here? Uh, he had – I saw him at a convention. Who's he? No, Greg Butler. <laughs> I had – Butler. I had some at a uh, tournament in Alabama, and he, and he asked me. Got you. Okay, so I definitely right, – that, that, what was that tournament like? I mean, you were playing with the team that ever came here. I didn't, I didn't play that tournament. Interesting. Okay, cool. So, he was talking to my dad and stuff about, about the town. It's because you're nice? You play, play you play really well, you're, 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 you're cooking? Got you, got you. I mean, so going back to the camp, I mean, what was the biggest thing you took away from it? All, with all the speakers that came in, the drills that maybe you learned, what was your biggest takeaway? Uh, the assistant coaches that came and told me about what they like in the players, in the guard and stuff. Open your mind to maybe what they're looking for. I mean, even then, when I think about what you have to do on the court to be better, what made you realize that there's stuff off the court, too, that, like, a lot of those lessons that people came that weren't assistant coaches, that weren't players, but they still had a really strong message. What did you learn in that stuff uh, before? Uh, like, when I was younger, like, my mom and dad, they kept telling me about your grades and stuff. They, like, really matter. And uh, top it out, they kept saying it. So, yeah. So, hammers at home. So, I hope you have a great last day at camp. And awesome seeing you. Andre, man, what's going on, dude? How you doing? Having a good week? Yeah, awesome. I mean, tell, tell, tell us a little about yourself on kind of what you've taken from camp this week. I'm originally from Texas. I have fun down here in the camp. I learned a lot, like, for example, how to be a better leader, teaching these young guys uh, a little bit about the game and what I know. Yeah, it's been great, though. So what have you been kind of what, – what's this been kind of been like for you? I mean, have you – whether this is camp of stations you've been running. Yeah. Can you tell us a little about kind of how this week's played out? Uh, so I've been running the ball handling with Coach Cookiehead and uh, – Coach Cookiehead. Yeah, Coach Cookiehead, yeah. Um, that's that's kind of my thing, ball handling. So I like teaching the kids, you know, a little bit of my swagger or whatever. So Coach Buck, my uncle, he took us to uh, UHA to get a couple workouts in. Got a lot of uh, tough combos. Uh, you know, that gym is kind of legendary. My uncle uh, played all his life there, you know. Uh, he, go, he went down as a legend. They put his name up on the banner or whatever. Incredible. And uh, my dad was up there, too, but, you know, he didn't get that kind of rep. But, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been awesome up there. Had a blast. Awesome. Great talking to you. And I hope you have a good day. Have a good last day. Thank you, man. What's going on? Not much. How you doing? Awesome guy. I get in talk to him this last day at camp. I think you're we're winding down. It's, it's bittersweet, but obviously, you had a great week. And it's, it's awesome seeing right, just the kids have fun over the last four days and get better over the last four days. I mean, what, what kind of brought you here to, to Hopkinsville for this camp? And, and how did you meet Coach Buck? Well, I'm from Hopkinsville. And um, him and my older brother were friends. Um, and, you know, we both went to the same high school. He's great. Just, he's a lot older than me, but uh, not too much older than me, but he's older than me. But, uh, yeah, we, that's, that's how we met. We've been knowing each other for a long time, and he reached out and, you know, was wanting some help with the camp. And, uh, you know, I volunteered my services for him. That's incredible, right? And giving back to the community is a huge thing. That's been a huge part of this, of this week for, for everyone involved. The one thing I thought was so cool is how Coach Bucks kind of brought in this community aspect as opposed to just only bringing in NBA coaches and players, even though we had that, right? Bringing in people in law enforcement, people in, in positions like that to really give the kids a message about life as opposed to basketball. I mean, where, where did you kind of take from that? Uh, it's what, it's what's, what's, um, what's best for these kids. They need to see different kind of faces um, in front of them every day, um, especially, you know, especially with the law enforcement with everything that's going on in today's life, you know. It was a good thing to have, you know, um, Sheriff Tyler DeArmond come in and show his face in front of the kids, and he did a Q&A with them. And, you know, it's just, it just brings us community a little bit closer, you know, we're seeing different faces. You know, we had Chris Whitney and Greg, you know, here. We had some other former basketball players here as well. So, you know, it just makes it look like we're all coming together here in, here in Hopkinsville. I love it, son. I mean, what was kind of your role, like, day in and day? I mean, I, I, I always saw you always on your feet, like, running around, so many things going on. I mean, what was that kind of like, kind of being in the middle of everything? Oh, uh, man, it's just, you know, I just I just got back from being in Nashville twice. I made two runs and took two people down there to Nashville. So, 
you know, I've just been over whatever I can help them do. You know, we did a, we did I, I own a transportation company, and so we, you know, took a lot of people back and forth to the airport and everything like that, and you know, had a lot of good, good conversations in between going in between the, the transportation from Hopperville to Nashville. We're gonna have another go on right now, and I, I gotta leave yeah, my yeah. flight to New York. It's gonna be fun, but awesome uh, getting to speak to you, and, and so happy we got to uh, meet each other at this camp. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, man. What's going on? What's going on? It's awesome getting to meet you over this past week, and obviously with taping the last day, it's it's bittersweet right seeing everyone go, but awesome just about to see you. if we're fucked on this last week of basketball. And I'm curious, right? I mean, what what even brought you here? Like, how did you meet Coach Buck and and up here in Hopkinsville? Well, I knew uh, Coach Buck through uh, his younger brother Andre. We used to go at it on the basketball court at uh, UHA, and then we also played junior pro together. So after that, you know, there was a like a, a family once I started coming around, we all hung out and you know what I mean, done things we used to doing as little young teenagers and we always looked up the grid, so. That's super cool, right? And obviously thinking how it all comes full circle and you're here right all these years later, um, helping coach and, and all this stuff. I mean, it's weeks, weeks, weeks been crazy. I mean, us as coach, we've been on our feet for, for all these hours every day, right? Coaching, I mean, what, what's been your main involvement in the camp and maybe the stations or on some of the drills and, and getting these guys better at, at the X's and O's? Well, my uh, stations, I've been working on with the kids on rebounding and boxing out because that's a big key of, like a lot of these little kids out here now today, they don't want to rebound, they don't want to box out. Everybody want to shoot, shoot, shoot. So. I want to focus on rebounding with them and boxing out. It's huge, and I've seen those stations when you basically obviously keep the intensity level up there and, and getting them better at, at that. Um, the one thing I've loved about this camp is how Coach Buck really just hasn't only hasn't only brought coaches or, or, or former players to come and speak to the kids. Also, people maybe that are from different walks of life, lawyers, um, city council, or people people that maybe have nothing to do with basketball, but so much to do with life. I mean, what have you kind of taken away from that? From that? I take away that. Um... It's really great what he done with bring other others in with speakers that's not like you say involved in basketball because some of these kids they have different paths in life and they need to learn things other than basketball with the attitudes that they have they need to adjust just on those things so bringing in guys to speak outside of basketball is really a great way to bring bring it in. Incredible! I can't wait to just continue that with this last day and we'll make it a good one. All awesome right. meeting you. You too. Charity, how are you? Awesome to talk, so I get to talk to you. <laughs> Awesome to get to interview on the last day of camp. Obviously, a great last few days of basketball, um, of just community, with everyone coming together. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm curious to ask you. I mean, I, I've seen you running around all over the place. Every time I see you, you're, you're, you're moving. I've never seen you sit down. <laughs> what, what have you been up to in this camp? Oh, gosh. Um, just a lot of behind the scenes stuff, just trying to get um, kids what they need, get get um people's registration information in get gift bags ready get food going just anything that needs to be done that's not basketball that's what i'm doing it might not be the way what the kids don't see right but we all as administrators obviously know that they, like it, this camp can't happen without that stuff so thank you so much for helping me put us put all this together i mean obviously right just just um coming back to hopkins right seeing what's going on here i mean what have you kind of seen just in the community building aspect from this which has been which has been huge uh well I mean, that alone has been a joy just to see um, all the kids coming in and recognize their faces because, you know, their parents and they have the same face. Just knowing everybody and seeing everybody haven't, you know, been involved here in a while. It's It's been very, very, very um, good for the soul, and it makes me want to come back and do, do more things. It's super exciting stuff. And then next year, obviously, too, is right. Gonna be, this is the inaugural one, but next year's going to be even better, right? We all know that. Oh, it's going to be oh. 100% better. <laughs> of course. I mean, what do you think? What, what, are you, what are you hopeful for? What do you think can happen next, by the time next year? I think next year will be the most smooth. Um, I think people will leave next year and say that was the, the best ran tournament in camp I've ever been to. Mark so we love to hear. Can't wait to see that happen. And I'm so excited to have met you. We'll talk soon. Coach DeMarcus, Coach Warren, man. What's going on? Good. Doing good, man. Nice to meet you. Glad you got to come down to my hometown of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and enjoy this experience with everyone. Oh, it was incredible. You're actually the first person I met coming into the hotel. Yes, sir. You um, did. So came out. <laughs> definitely really fun, right? And, and obviously, a, a great last couple of days. And hopefully, we'll have a, I know we'll have a great last day today. Right. I mean, I'm curious. I mean, what kind of brought you What kind of brought you here? How did you kind of meet, meet Buck? Even though you, right? well, Buck. How did you meet Buck? And, and, up, and up here that's my bro man that's 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 my brother man that's family uh moved to greg when he was playing with in the nba got in a circle got to being around learned so much from him uh i started out as a basketball trainer he was actually 
he taught me how to train. So I ended up training with him and took it as an experience and learning. And I turned it into a business for myself. That's incredible. I mean, what was the, tell us a little about that business and what you're doing. Uh, it was called uh, Exclusive Training Hoops Academy, uh, located down in Dallas, Texas, what a DFW area all around. And uh, once I got into that, and like I said, been in a circle with Greg and getting to meeting uh, NBA players and stuff, I started training them. They started hearing about my ability and hit me up for training sessions. And my name got out there and here I am, Exclusive Training Hoops Academy. It's, it's awesome, right? Thinking about how, how you're doing that and right, all the lessons you learn from those people and maybe you're passing them on to camp, people in this camp. Yes. And what have been some of the things, the biggest takeaways you've taken from this from the last few days of camp? From the last, I just, uh, I will say just the impact of just coming back home and doing this, you know, this is something we're gonna do every single year from here on out. Uh, it's great to come back home and do this. It's, it's, it's so much that we have to come all the way back, you know, because we're all spaced out in different di different states and cities. But to come home and do this and for Greg to bring it back home, it's, it's just awesome. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's incredible. I mean, what, what are you kind of doing maybe day in and day out from the camp? I mean, with the stations, and the, I mean, there's been so much. You, you're kind of every, you're, you're handling yeah, everything. Been, yeah, I've kind of been doing everything, making sure the camp's staying together. I've been, we've been doing this for uh, since like 2005. We would travel the country doing camps and stuff. So I pretty much know everything to do to cover everything but buck knows i know every aspect of the game he could put me in defensive dribbling shooting he's no he's going to get he's no he's got somebody that's going to teach these kids the right way and the right techniques it's incredible i can't wait for the, what, a couple more hours doing that today and it's going to wrap up a great week so yes, awesome sir. Meeting thank you, you so awesome much john you. nice meeting you sir how you doing john I'm doing great I'm doing hey great. uh like you said uh i had an interview earlier with you and uh you said I was the first guy you met when you got here to Hopkinsville, Kentucky, when you got off the plane. Yeah, no, you were. It was really fun. I, mean, I got off the plane, didn't know what to expect, had never met anyone before. Coach Buck, I only said I met on his my podcast before. And seeing you, I was like, so that guy's got a fucking, he's, he's got to be, he's got to be, a, he's got to be a friend. He's got to be, he's got to be uh, a guy you got to talk to. And you're right, help me get to my room, get all set up. So really appreciate that and, 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 and welcoming me to Hopkinsville. Absolutely. Speaking, speaking of uh, Coach Buckner, how did uh, you guys link up? It's funny. So I started this podcast called Gen Z Hoops around this time last year. Um, and I'm interviewing NBA players, coaches, executives, really anyone in the basketball world that I can really uh, just talk to and kind of learn from. What, what's, what's your story? What's, what, what's, what's this other person's story? Because that's what I find really interesting is that everyone might look at the titles of these people. But it's a story. Coach Buckner has an interesting story. I mean, it goes beyond the 10 years in the NBA. It goes beyond like, his story. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm even living that story now by like coming back and going to his old high school and seeing all this old stuff, meeting all, all his childhood friends and being like, okay, wow, like, there's, there's a story behind this, um, which I think everyone has a story. And that's kind of the biggest thing I take, take away from that. But I reached out to him on LinkedIn, cold deep messaged him and said, Coach Buckner, mainly because he was uh, with, with the Cavs, would love to have you come on my show and talk about all the cool stuff we're doing. He said yes. And then in about a week, not even not even a week ago, maybe three days before I ended up leaving for this camp, I saw him post the thing on Instagram. I said, "I'm there. <laughs> if, he, awesome. if, if, if Coach Bugno will take me, I'm there." Right. And now, and now, just a week later, we're wrapping up a great week, and I couldn't be more couldn't be more excited about it. Nice, nice. Well, tell us a little more about yourself. Where are you from, and uh, where are you looking forward to doing more, like five years or more down in your career? Well, for sure. So, I mean, I'm. 20 years old from New York City. I'm currently a, a, a rising senior at Blue College in New York City. Nice. Um, coach high school basketball up there at Xavier High School. Love doing that. Um, and basketball's always been a huge part of my life. Um, so really, my, my goal, everyone always asks me, and, and people my age might say, the, to be a GM, to do this, to do that. My goal is just working basketball. If I'm waking up every day and doing this, that's why I'm, I'm already living the dream. It's not a five years from now thing, it's a right now thing. Awesome. Well, you being from New York and here in Kentucky, they're both kind of big, huge basketball state. So I can see why you have that in you, you know. Uh, will you be joining us in years to come with this? I, 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 I can't. If, if Coach, if Coach Buck don't have me back, I'm here. Oh, we'll most, cer most certainly definitely have you back, man. We enjoyed you. Uh, welcome to Hopkinsville, Kentucky. You now family now, man. Thanks for listening to Gen Z Hoops. Make sure to follow, like, and subscribe on Instagram, LinkedIn, and all major social media platforms at Gen Z Hoops. You can tune in and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and every other podcast platform on the planet. Get ready for the next episode.